Okay, dito sa Pilipinas, parang nakaya, nakakayanig na yung mga balibalita araw-araw, no? For example, yung totoo ba ito? I don't know. 10% daw of our fisheries have been taken over uh, by China or has been lost due to this uh, <laughs> South China. Magiging 40%. Ayun ang mga usap-usapan. Oh. Uh, but if it's true or not. However, of course, these are ripples compared to what is happening in the Middle East, in Iran, in Ukraine. Ano, saan pa ba? Ah, sa Africa. Ano, where several articles say uh, the U.S. is all over Africa. 300% <coughs> increase in military operations from 2008 to today. Ano, and the French, are, French military is all over Africa also. Yun ang talagang earthquake. Ano. Uh, but the real, so to me, the real earthquakes are, one, the Obama's uh, backtracking on the attack on Syria and then the sudden uh, warming to uh, talks with Iran. And it's a uh, game changer. Uh, let's go to Javad first. Bakit nangyayari yan sa Iran, for example? I mean, this has been long in coming. I mean, I think it was around 2005 and 6 when the Bush administration basically said there's, there's, the military solution is not really going to be a solution. And sa Iran? Yes, uh, sa Iran. And they needed Iran to stab stabilize Iraq. In fact, Iran and U.S. brought a new government, the Shia government of Mal Maliki, into power. But... The thing is, it's only in the last few years that the Americans had a kind of administration that you know, is willing to take that leap of Likewise, faith. Likewise, in Iran, maybe. And also in Iran, it's in the last two years that you have an administration that is also willing to uh, reciprocate that. Government, not necessarily the state. The state apparatus in Iran is consistent. I think this is where you have a Nixon moment. Uh, I don't think U.S. and Iran... Please explain Nixon moment. Right. I mean, in early 1970s, uh, the Nixon administration in the U.S. realized that China, just like the United States, has a common enemy, and that was the Soviet Union. So based on that very cold uh, calculating maneuver, Mao Zedong, despite being very uh, much an ideologue, was willing to accommodate American uh, overtures. And that paved the way for eventual normalization of ties. So there was this and moment of common interest. important is that that paved the way, uh, to a great extent, to the decline of the USSR. You can argue in that sense. Yeah, of course, I mean, a huge country was taken out of the communist okay, bloc and the bloc. Soviet Union was very much isolated. Why we have no time to so go through the details So I brought that up that. because uh, if that worked uh, for that period, mm. will this work for Obama's uh, uh, and uh, maybe Clinton or the Bush II, uh, Bush III <laughs> <Three>. in, in <laughs> U.S. <laughs> uh, in terms of geopolitics? <laughs> no? Kasi, right. uh, does this free, it, uh, from, free the U.S. from entanglement in the Middle East for a greater effort on Asia pivot? which is our headache naman if it happens. Right. No, I think this is a... Of course, for Obama, he sees Asia Pacific as the place to be. This is the most dynamic region of the world, and this is where the real challenger to U.S. will come from. In fact, the challenger may have already arrived right. uh, <laughs> faster than we realize. Uh, Middle East is not where you're really going to have the future of the world necessarily. Middle East is not where you're going to see a great power that will be able to challenge the United States. You're going to have formidable regional powers like Turkey, like Iran, like Israel, for instance. Now, I think for Obama administration, the, the focus is to at least reduce the entanglements as much as possible. Clearly, Sunni extremism represented by Al-Qaeda in places like Yemen and by the ISIS in Syria and Iraq is the number one priority. In no ways is Iran a comparable threat for any reasonable person. Mm. And Iran is a nation state. And Kissinger, a few years, uh, decades ago, asked Iran should decide whether it's an ideology and, and revolutionary force or it's a, not, it's a country that prioritizes its national interest. Okay. I think finally Iran is entering Termidor. And finally, Iran, just like how China in the 70s moved towards emphasizing Thermidor, interest over ideology. Termidor, by the way, you want to explain to the public, happen. is the swing back uh, of uh, the pendulum in right. terms of uh, attitude, policies, and so on. Let's go to uh, Chito. Uh, what are the geopolitical earthquakes uh, that is relevant to us? Uh, sa, sa Philippines? Oh. Ang, ang pinakamalaki ito nangyayari sa South China Sea, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, kasi this is where you see uh, escalating the geopolitical rivalry between the U.S. as the dominant. The, the U.S. is no longer the economic underwriter the system but the US is still the ultimate underwriter of the military mm. itong uh, so, supposed to be stability mm. regional stability in, in the, the world's South policeman oh. up to now mm. so what's happening now is that the Chinese are developing the capability to challenge that yeah. and I think in a sense you will see a bipolar situation 
Uh, uh, let's let's uh, yeah, you circulated and I also read that separately and but I appreciate the you, you circulated it the article by your friend Harry Kazianis yeah. uh, uh, explaining why he thinks the Chinese are uh, acting the way uh, they are here's the article of uh, Kazianis that is under the heading of uh, China I know um, Yon. well can we start with the title or you can I know well anyway I, in that article uh, the, let's read this. According to Admiral Wu Shengli, former commander of the uh, PLA he's Navy, still is. Yeah? he's still there. Uh, okay. He's that still was in the article. Okay. Uh, in China's modern history, imperialists and colonists initiated more than 470 invasions of China, including 84 large ones from the sea. So this refer the 84 large ones includes the invasion into Manchuria, mm. uh, the takeover of Hong Kong, Bring Shanghai, and so on. So these are very real, real issues of Chinese. So what does it, this have in relation to, what relation does this have to the building of these uh, islands in the West Philippine Sea? Well, the second part says, then we'll go to Chito. If China's military were to deter uh, or uh, halt the deployment of superior military forces into areas of Chinese territory or areas Beijing perceives as a core interest to the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea, Another period of what leaders in China might see as a new form of subjugation could theoretically be avoided. Is this uh, correct to say that maybe they are just pushing their perimeter defense uh, farther out? The, and does it mean that they will interfere with the freedom of navigation? Because that's the implication some people are uh, saying now. No? Okay, you can uh, flash back to Cheetos' uh, <laughs> baby face. Okay. If the Chinese mm. were to impede Mm. in freedom of navigation, that would be a strategic but mistake. But is it a real concern? Because I... I, I no, right now, yeah. right now, calibrated assertiveness and mm. tactic in China. Mm. And, and they, they're observing what they call a military threshold. Mm. Na, imbis na lusubin ang pag-asa, imbis na lusubin ang ayungin, <laughs> they will, parang bawa constrictor yan. Mm. Eh. Anuhin mo na lang yung supply lines, mm. no? pahirapan mo. Pero beyond that, Itong land reclamation, these seven places or seven islands, how work na nila yan since mm. the 19, well, you 80s know, and 90s. Yeah. No? Oh. And then we claim it, mm. pero hindi natin inoccupy. Wala tayong ginawa. Oh. Wala tayong ginawa. Mm. We have our, our eight or nine places. Mm. The key, I think, for the Philippines, the priority is just hold on to what we have, mm. defend it. it. Ang ginawa ng China, it's aimed, in a sense, it's a countermeasure against the arbitration. Itong pitong lugar na ito, ito ang pinangalanan natin sa arbitration case. Pagka natalo sila, bali ang magiging ruling, umalis kayo dyan. Mm. Kaya ginagawa nila yan para no, kung matalo sila, oh, May ano magagawa na? Eh, oh. Nandito na kami. Oh. Pero beyond that, though, there is a strategic perspective here. Kasi for the first time, they're able to project power mm. further south to South China Sea. That Admiral... Si Wu Xiongli, mm. he has another quote mm. in another book. Anong sabi? Sa conference sa Singapore, tinanong sa, bakit ba kayo, why, why is South China Sea very important for you? Sabi niya, kung tanggalin ko ang kamay mo at paa mo, anong pakiramdam mo? That's how we feel about mm. the South China Sea. Medyo nakakatakot yung sagot niya. Mm. Mm. Pero kasi dito makikita yung pag-iisip nila, ang tingin nila sa South China Sea, East China Sea, ang yeah. tawag nila ngayon, near waters. It's the maritime defense perimeter. Mm. The problem yeah. is, the Americans right now are the dominant military power. Mm. Kaya, the Americans won't give up so easily. Mm. The Chinese are trying to put it as a case of sovereignty, yung itong mga isla mm. and the uh, surrounding waters, as a case of economic survival, and as a case of a but strategic... But I, I think I mentioned it earlier during uh, our off-the-air discussion that the Chinese have made it uh, 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 took pains to be very polite, uh, humble in their statements about these latest uh, issues. No, I did. Oh. that they uh, they uh, they are reasonable. I, I, uh, they are taking care of the environment and so on. No, uh, no, I, I understand that. Mm. And and, and uh, that, that, that these facilities are open during emergencies for everyone to use. And I think the international so community will take them on their word. Mm -hmm. Na pagka merong bagyo mm. at may pumasok dyan, Wag nyo gagamitan mm. ng kanyon, no water oh. cannon. Mm. But, but the point I'm making is, the problems, the Chinese have a problem sa public diplomacy. Mm. They should have done that from the beginning. Mm. Inintay nilang job from mm. Defense Secretary Carter, mm. from Presid uh, mm. President Obama. Obama. Mm. At saka, nakikita mo how sensitive they are. No? Pagka Pilipinas ang nagsalita, 
bali wala mm. sovereignty namin yan mm. pagka nagsalita na a power mm. that's more powerful mm. than China mm. then they react because mm. ayaw nilang kasagupain ng mm. Amerika they, ngayon they react quite strongly they, they uh, about the muscling of uh, China anong sagot ng China who has the muscles and who's the like, wow. you know, no, the, the, you have the word war uh, coming on no? the, the point I'm making is that the Chinese though are sensitive na they don't want a military confrontation. Kasi kung matalo sila sa US, another mm. century no. of humiliation. Yeah, we'll, That's the last thing they want. We'll, we'll get back point. to that. So Let's go to the uh, Indian subcontinent. Uh, <laughs> ginagatungan kasi yung uh, supposed uh, uh, built-in uh, conflict of China and India dahil sa territories. You know? But actually, India has made it a point to be very uh, participative sa BRICS and other initiatives of China. Have you been following that? Uh, yes, well, yeah, India ha has been in conflict with China over the borders in mm. the north. They have even clashed militarily. But on another level, on trade, commerce, or whatever, India sees itself as a recipient, basically, of China's rapid advance and India's backwardness. And they, they want to catch up and use that backwardness, basically, to catch up to China and the rest of the world. Uh, you have to understand India's history is also a complicated one because when the Mughals came into India, they ruled India for three, four hundred years. And these are basically Islamic uh, Persian rulers speaking, from yeah. Persian speaking. They came to India. Ancestors of Richard. Well, some of them were <laughs> Persians and all. And what was strange about the Mughals is they did not actually force conversions of Islam mm -hmm. and they maintained that, you know, whatever religion you want, okay, and all this, and they actually developed India to a great extent, so much so that when the British walked in, they basically ignored them, uh, essentially, because, you know, they, they were basically royalty. Yeah, but dynasts. let's let's move forward. Magaaway bang China at India? No. I don't think so. No, you no, all no. agree. No, Number two, not. because uh, we have two minutes on in this segment, uh, Pakistan and China just pulled a Terrific coup, billion, you know, 46, 48 billion, you know, eight, I think. 48 yeah. billion yeah. dollar yeah. economic corridor, developing Gwadar port and railway, uh, fast uh, train, and so on, on this, um, to uh, Kashgar, uh, is it? Uh, Am I correct? And then also to a pipeline Kashmar. with Iran. Of, uh, uh, and then opening yeah. pipeline of fuel, uh, gas and natural yeah. uh, oil yeah. to, uh, to Iran. Yeah, Again, game changer in that, in that region, you know. But that has been yeah. on the uh, drawing long board for yeah, a long, long time. Long. Yeah, yeah. Together with India, they Spring want to basically pipe... The that's a better. That's a Iran. that's a new arrangement for a balance of power on the sub in, uh, Indian subcontinent. Well, essentially, China does not like to be dependent on the Straits of Malacca, mm -hmm. mm. yeah. and bring the. That's that's so much closer out of the Bay of Bengal out into uh, Pakistan and into uh, mainland Correct. Asia. Correct. So they will save a lot of money. Yeah. Through that pipeline. And also that uh, negates the possibility of uh, being choked here. Sure. In South China Strait, China. Yeah. And also, they yeah. are building a port in Myanmar on the side of India, mm. again to carry oil right. and gas and all that. That's been yeah. in the... Is that Chittagong? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, that's uh, India. Uh, uh, Indi oh, okay. So, so okay. essentially, that's been part of their... So what's our conclusion in the second part? The earthquakes uh, are, are reshaping the world... Reshaping the world uh, order. Uh, the, oh. the world order. The fault lines are very Dinaba, clear. This will not... Uh, no. Uh, I'm getting the signal. We have to take our okay, break. So we'll okay. come back to this after this break. Essentially, the Middle East oil is more headed east.